Hi guys, so today I'm going to be sharing with you how to create a Harlequin look. It's not based on the movie, it's just something that I created because my sister's going to Comic Con this year and she wanted to dress up as Harlequin so this was a bit of a practice to see what she's going to do at the actual events. I really hope you like the look, it's fairly simple to follow through. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions on how to create this then please leave them in the comments below and if you try and create this look for yourself then please leave me some pictures, I'd love to see them. To begin, I'm using Snazaroo Special Effects Wax. This is really easy to work with. I'm building it up to create a smile from one side of her face. But I begin by making it quite warm in my hands and then spreading it across her face. It's really easy to work with when it's warm and you can just spread it into the areas that you want. It doesn't have to be particularly neat. You're just trying to build up a little bit of texture and a bit of depth. To give her a scar and a smile, I'm using a nail dotting tool, pushing this through the wax till it reaches her actual skin and pulling it up to the edges to make her smile. This will give her a really defined scar and show the depth of the modeling wax. Once I was happy with how the wax looked, I set it in place with a bit of translucent pressed powder. To both protect Rose's skin and keep the makeup looking as best and as long as possible, I use the Lasadi My Miracle Perfect Primer. You don't have to do this step, but if you are going to something like Comic Con, then you probably will want it because it'll make the makeup last a lot longer and also sit much better on the skin. Apply a small layer of primer all over your face and then start applying your foundation. As Rose is a much darker skin tone to me, my foundation made her look incredibly pale. I use the L'Oreal Paris True Match Foundation in C1. It is also quite a cool tone, which is what I was wanting for this look. So it made her look incredibly pale and washed out without making it look comical or silly and having to apply a lot of white face paint. I applied this all over the face, buffing it in with a brush. Although it doesn't show up brilliantly on camera, I did a lot of highlighting on Rose. This accentuated her features and made her look a little bit more extreme. I highlighted using a pen that I got from eBay for a pound. I'll link it below, but the pen was called the Crystal Bright Lipstick Eyeshadow Pencil. It was a really creamy, white, shimmery pencil that went onto the skin really well and just complemented the look with its pale, shimmery tones. I added highlights along the top of her cheekbones, along the bridge of her nose, and also in the middle of her chin and forehead, and then blended it all out again into the foundation. For the eyebrows, I used Soap and Glory in shade Hot Chocolate. I started by brushing them out and then filling them in with the pencil. For the Harlequin look, I wanted her eyebrows to be very structured, I wanted them to be very defined. I wanted them to look sexy, seductive, comic book style, very angular and defined. Extending the eyebrow down below her natural eyebrow and filling it in so it was all solid. I wanted to make sure that they looked really perfect rather than looking natural. So that it wasn't just one block colour, I also added in another shade, which was the Revlon Brow Gel Pencil in shade Brunette, adding in a few extra strokes and a little bit more definition in another shade. To set the natural eyebrow hairs in place and make sure that they stayed where I wanted them to, I set them with the brow gel. I did this on both sides and then used the highlighter underneath. This just gave it a little bit more definition and made her eyebrows look a little bit higher. And then blended this out. For her character, I wanted to create an extremely strong contour. So I used a guide to make sure that it was absolutely perfect and gave a very straight line for where the contour was going. I used Bobbi Brown's bronzing powder in golden light, shade 1. And I used this because it's quite a warm shade and it very much contrasted the cool tones that I'd already applied to her skin. I contoured underneath her cheekbone to make it stand out a bit more, to make it more prominent and not to give any more colour to her face. For her eye makeup, I started out by using the Glow and Ray black eyeliner and I marked out an initial diamond shape for where I was going to draw in between. I marked out my design and began filling it in, but I realised that the eyeliner pencil wasn't brilliant for this as it gave more of a grey than a dark black. And so I changed to the Lollipops Makeup Eye Pencil in shade 701 Goodbye Moon. I changed to this because it was a very strong dark black eyeliner that was giving a lot of pigment and was very smudgy. I then took a small makeup brush that I got from a Maybelline set to do gel eyeliner and just started pulling it in different directions making it look very smeared around. I then took my finger to create bigger smears and just basically messed it up as much as I could making it look a little bit messy and lived in but very grungy and unkept. To make sure it was a solid block colour and also set the eyeliner a bit I patted in some black eyeshadow. I then started using red eyeshadow on her other eye. The eye palette that I used is a Jazuli 120 colours, although I think it's now been called Rock. You can get these on Amazon and they're about £5 but you get hundreds of colours. I filled in her eye with the most vibrant red that I could find from the set. I then extended it out into a flick making it a very extreme look. The eyeliners that I used to create this look were the Soap and Glory Super Cat Eyeliner and the Collection Extreme Felt Liner. 
I went along the top of her lash line and then extended it out to create a very dramatic cat flick eyeliner. To give an extreme look, I went along the bottom of the lash. To make it quite a dramatic harlequin eye, I extended both of the lines on the inner bit of the eye down towards her face. Once the eyeliner was done, I then went back to the eyeshadow, adding in some definition to the hollow, the crease in her eye and also going out towards the edge of the cat flick. We've finished with the eyes for now and I'm going to move on to the lips. I started by lining them again with the Glow and Ray eyeliner. This is a really long lasting eyeliner so it would be great for around her mouth if she ever wants to eat and if she touches her mouth which people are more likely to do then it's more likely to stay in place. I created a smile from the corner of her mouth that was quite exaggerated and made very exaggerated points at the top and also at the bottom of her mouth. As you can see I overlined them and made her lips look much bigger. I then used the collection felt liner to add in some dots to make her look more jester like. The lip colour that I chose to use was the Lush Lip Colour in shade Decisive. This is quite a wet looking lip colour and it also stains the lips quite well so it's very good for if you're spending the day in makeup because it's quite long lasting. As it's a liquid lip colour it's also great for doing the ombre lips. I did this by again going over it with the Black Glow and Ray eyeliner and then going again over it with the Lush Lip Colour and it slowly starts blending together as you do more and more layers of this. It will happen naturally but if you want you can take a brush but doing the extra layers and layers layering upon layer means the colour will last a bit longer for you and also that the colour will be quite intense. I then started colouring in her scar. I used the Lush Lip Colour to begin as a base. It looks quite wet but it also looks like a shade of blood. I wanted the scar to look very deep with lots of different shades so I also used the Yves Rocher Grand Rouge lipstick and this just added a slightly different red shade to the scar as well as a bit of a different texture. Start by being quite wide at the corner of her mouth and extending this and going out towards a point where you want your scar to end. I then went back to the Jizuli or La Rock 120 colours eyeshadow and started patting in different eyeshadows to build up the scar. I started off by using reds, moved on to purples and eventually blacks. You can experiment with this as much as you like. Greens may work but I used more purples and browns and blacks and reds because it looked like bruising and made it look extremely sore and red and very painful. To finish off the colours on the scar I then again went over with the Lush Lip Colour Indecisive. I thought that made it look like it was still quite fresh and quite wet because the lip colour stays looking wet. Continuing the jester joke theme, I then added a few more dots, some around the diamonds around her eye and then at the end of her Catholic eyeliner. Rose then added some of her own false lashes. I didn't get this on camera, sorry, um, but I also wasn't going to try and apply false eyelashes to her because I would probably have taken her eye out. But then while she was doing this, I cut plain suit shapes out of acetate. As you can see, the shapes that I cut out aren't perfect. They're very wonky and look very handmade, but I did do a few different sizes of each suit. For this, I used Snazaroo face paint colours and a makeup sponge. I started off doing the red playing suit colours, and I just sponged a few along her forehead going down towards her ear, and also along her neck. I then started doing the black suits, making sure that the red face paint had already dried. Your sponge does need to be a little bit damp, but if it's too watery, then the colours will just run. Sponge them all over in different places, varying them up. I didn't make them look very uniformed, I made sure that they were all over the place or scattered. I did this so that the different suits scattered down her face, down her neck, and onto her chest. I did this on the other side so that it wasn't mirrored, but it was quite symmetrical in the way that I did it, so it covers the other side of her face. And that's your finished look. Rose also bought different scrunchies so that her hair was different colours on different sides and I also took some hair chalk so that the bottoms of her hair were different colours. I really hope you like this Harlequin inspired makeup look. I hope you like her costume and if you are at London Comic Con this year and spot her then say hello. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this makeup look and if you are going as Harlequin yourself then please send me some pictures. I would love to see what you come up with. If there are any other makeup looks you'd like to see me create, then please leave them in the comments below. If you are new, then please subscribe, and if you've enjoyed it, then please give it a big thumbs up. Thank you for watching. Bye!